This orchid smells so fantastic. In the morning between 8 a.m. and maybe noon, and then for a little while at nighttime, it just, oh, the scent wafts through the entire kitchen. It smells so sweet and fresh. Speaking of sweet, hey, pumpkin. You just wake up from your nap, you have a good nap? You so sweet, pumpkin. Little bit of pumpkin time for you all. Such a good girl, pumpkin. Yes, you too. You're a good boy, Turbo. Look at how big he is. You're freaking huge for four and a half months old, Turbo. He's still kind of moving through those awkward phases. Right now, he's mostly proportioned out. I swear his ears have been the same size since he came here. Height-wise, he's almost as tall as Toby, so I'm thinking that the next growth phase is probably he's just gonna get, like, extra long and then get bulky. I don't know. He's gonna be moving through these awkward phases for a year or so. Turn that off. Oh yeah, hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. I'm great, I've been in the mood to vlog, but the weather, eh, I don't think this is the right time for it. Got tornado warnings left and right. Are you supposed to be up there? Turbo, get down. Yeah, you know better than that. You're not supposed to be up there. As I was saying, the wind is very extreme. I'm shocked nothing's blown over. I ch excuse you, hey, 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 hey. Give me that, that is gross. It's not for you, chew on your toys, just toys. I chained up the queen palm and that actually has worked out very well. It hasn't blown over since I wrapped it up with that cable, so that's good. But I was filming a different video, a quick, very quick video on the what I do to dig up the cannas and store them. And the wind was ripping through the entire time and it didn't sound like it normally does because the banana leaves have gotten so big. So it just sounded kind of like like banana leaves being slapped together. It was an odd sound. Some tears, but no damage. Anyways, I don't have much planned for the week. Just trying to enjoy the nice weather while it's still here, even though things are kind of gloomy and scary up there. Right now, things are safe. There's another front moving through, and like I said, there's some tornadoes just north of here, so not the best time to be filming outdoors with the wind and occasional lightning and everything. I was feeling talkative and wanted to walk around, look at the plants some, because the lighting's still good. It's still nice enough to be able to have a look at everything. This week, the palm trees are going to their winter home. They're going off to storage, so really all I need to do is, I, I mean, I could go through and pull all the stuff out from underneath, but I don't think I'm going to. Normally every year I like pull everything out of the pots and get them prepped for the company to take them, but it, you know, I, I don't know. I don't think that that's really necessary. They can do that. With what they charge, they can handle it. To have this mindset of, I gotta make sure to do everything myself and nobody should have to do the things, but that doesn't make sense. You know, if like, if you're getting your oil changed, you don't need to go in there and make sure to loosen the bolts first before they go in and do the oil change. It's just, let the people do their jobs. That's what I'm going to do. I do need to uh, come in here and pull all the impatience out, which is unfortunate because they are so pretty. It just seems impractical to hope that they'll be able to like lift this up and over all of those. They're like 30 inches tall. I don't think that's going to happen, especially because the pot's already sunk into the ground, so it kind of has to be pulled this way and gently slid out. So this will be the last we get to see of all of this. There'll still be stuff here, but it's gonna be pretty torn up at some point. That's okay, it's that time of year. Time to go ahead and let the things go and get ready for next year and plan for the winter time. And I keep telling myself I need to get in here and trim all this stuff up because they're gonna take it, but they're not. I'm not going to let them take it. Talked about that last week. Lots of y'all had some great suggestions, which I really appreciated. Most of them aren't really gonna work for me, but they were still really smart ideas that I'll be keeping in mind for the future for maybe smaller plants. Some of those things might be more practical. You better stop it, Turbo. Hey, I see what you're doing. You're very clever, but that food is not for you. That's for the tortoise. You're not a turtle, stop it. You see him? There's just like two pieces. Oh, Turbo! Just get in here and remove temptation for him. Put that over there. Today's the day of the week where I give Colby prepared food instead of just lettuce. With the sulcatas, it's generally good to like stick to lettuce and grasses. But once a week, just for some extra nutrition, because Colby's got some issues, always has, the vet's just recommended to give him some prepared food just to get some of those extra nutrients into his diet. I know, very random, just explaining why there's like colorful pieces of food laying on the patio and why he's trying to get to them. So they're going to take the queen palm, 
right here. That's all, that's not going to fit in the house anymore. The Adenidia over there, so I will need to pull the drip off of those. And I guess it's going to have to move Turbo Town, or at least just scoot it. I'm, I'm really over having this thing out here. It's been great for the tortoise, but I don't, I don't know. Spent so much time redoing the patio this year, getting all the old furniture out of here and clearing up space and getting things organized. And he doesn't use Turbo Town anymore. It's pretty much just turned into Colby's play area where I can let Colby run around all day and not have to worry about him digging his way under the fence or down to the storm sewer. I still let Colby free range when I'm paying attention because I think it's nice for them to be able to change their levels and go up and down some hills and just feel the earth underneath them and not just cement. You know, that's not probably very pleasant for them to be like that all the time. This way, even if I'm not out here, Colby has the whole area to himself and he seems to be loving it. So at some point, I don't know about this year because next week the cold's supposed to be moving in. So this is all going to be gone fairly soon anyways, but maybe next year I'll do a smaller version of this in a corner or something like that, but not right in the middle of the patio. Oh, I was talking about the palm trees that are going to storage. So the Adenidia, the queen, the queen palm, not you because you're nasty. This queen palm, that queen palm, I'm pretty sure. Kind of on the fence with that one, but I mean, maybe the Alexander Palm, and then if they can fit it, the Washingtonia. It did a lot of growing this year. They may not be able to fit it. If they can't, then I, I, I'll attempt to protect it, but I don't, I don't have a ladder that big. I guess I could rent one. People have overwintered Washingtonias here before, but you gotta wrap them really, really well with frost cloth and Christmas lights and just really, really hope and pray that you're going to have a mild winter. I mean, I'm not just gonna let it die, so we'll, see what happens there. Like at the very least, I might be able to get some bulk frost cloth and use some like 10 foot PVC poles to try and get it over the top and tie it in there. I'm sure we'll figure something out. That kind of cold won't be rolling in for a while, hopefully. Like I said, next week, the lows are supposed to start dipping into the 40s. It's like 87 right now, it was 91 yesterday. So it's still been very beautiful and pleasant out here. And uh, this is also why I haven't done full containers this year. I did have a couple people mention that. Usually every year I have this big like metal wagon that has pumpkins on it that I'll fill with succulents or kale and cabbage. It's just, I don't know, I wasn't feeling it this year. Everything is still so lush and vibrant and tropical. It just doesn't feel like fall. It's still very humid and sticky and like, I, I love it. It's also gross at the same time. Those fall containers, you better stop. You're not supposed to be in there. Turbo, get out of there. You're not supposed to be in the garden. That's the thing we're working on right now talk about that again in a minute. What I was saying though was that, um, crap, I don't remember what I was saying. Plugging with the puppy around has not been easy. He is so well behaved, but every couple of minutes he takes my attention to have to correct him with certain things like chewing on plants. Oh yeah, the fall containers. I just wasn't into it. It just hasn't really felt like fall. And it, you know, those things cost money. All those plants cost money. And it just, to me, feels like a waste when it's only gonna be for a few weeks. Kale and cabbage, in my experience, I just don't love it unless we're having a really cool fall in a cool September, which you never know whether or not that's going to be the case, but typically it's not. So oftentimes they get planted up and then it's still in the 90s and really warm and then they start to bolt and just look blech and then they rot when it gets really, really, really cold and wet around December. And they'll hold on to some of their growth, but not all of it. Well, they have the potential to be evergreen and when they are, I think it's beautiful, but just never know what's going to happen there with them. So I, just, I don't feel like spending the money on them. It makes more sense to me in the springtime with the Gerber daisies and the pansies and those things because they can just kind of chill their way through summer, move them into the shade, and then they'll put on another show in the fall usually. I'm starting to see up here in the hanging basket, all that stuff is starting to flush back out. This doesn't look great, but the pansies are starting to flower again. The lobularia is looking better because the nights are starting to cool off. And over here, this planter, which I did in the springtime with some Gerber daisies. I had a bunch of violas in the front and then the um, tete a uh, tets. I don't speak French. I don't know how you pronounce it, but daffodils in the back. And I just moved this over to the shade and the Gerber daisies started to wake back up. Gerber daisy, Gerbera, Gerbera, whatever you prefer. It doesn't matter to me, but this is more what I was talking about here. So this made sense to me because it's starting to come back and put on a little show. Makes sense. But the fall stuff, it's like, okay, it'll be pretty for a month and then it, most of it's just going to die. 
at least in the containers. In the ground, the kales, cabbages, and pansies, those usually, they'll keep looking nice throughout the winter, but they're not going to do any growing. Did you find this stick again and start chewing on it? By the way, walked away from it for like, what, 15 seconds? Oh, that's mulch. No. That's why I didn't jump into any fall containers. I thought about it, but I was like, eh, I don't know. I'm really more interested in getting the perennials into the ground here probably next week when things cool off and it'll be more appropriate to pull the impatiens up. And then once I start moving the tropicals inside, then I can have a better look at what spots I might want to like plop some color in for the winter time, but really not so much time out here during the winter, so. Ah, we'll see. As I was going to say about Turbo and his new affinity for plants, he had been pretty good about not chewing up plants. He got the begonia and a couple other things, but then he had a play date with his cousin, who's just two weeks younger than him, and um, they went crazy. This happened in like 15 to 20 seconds. They just dognadoed right through here. And it's okay because these, they're getting sad this time of year. They tend to want to die down and look pretty crummy anyways. Not quite this bad. But I was going to be cutting and pulling these up here in the next couple of weeks. So I'm not happy about the behavior that went along with that, the damage. I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's a shame, but it's really, it's like two weeks. Doesn't mean cutting these down anyways. What do you have? You're eating hibiscus leaves? That's not normal. Don't eat the hibiscus leaves. Those are for the turtle. You're not a turtle. So it's like he developed a taste for plants ever since he had that play date. He had to really keep an eye on him out here. Not so much that he wants to eat the plants, he just thinks it's a whole lot of fun to run through them and rip them to pieces, which was the thing I was most worried about when it came to having a dog, another dog, and here we are. Luckily, the off season for the garden's almost here. And I mean, this time next month, there probably won't be much of anything out here for him to even chew on. So what I've been doing is basically just teaching him where the boundaries are. If he takes a step into the garden, say, uh-uh, get out. And he's been pretty good about doing it. It's just a matter of him knowing, hey, when you're not around, I think I can get away with this. You're a very smart puppy. Yes, you are. He's a very smart, get out of there, turbo. Turbo out. There we go, good boy. See, so it's, he knows when I say get out, he knows what he's supposed to do. It's just now it's a matter of teaching him to just not do it, period. We'll get there, these things take time. Uh-uh, turbo, no, good boy. And then the pool's gonna get covered up. I don't know when, sometime in November and be able to then get to teach him not to run across the pool cover. It's a safety cover. I'm sure I'll be talking about this again because people are going to be asking. It has springs on it so that, you know, if a child were to run across, it won't collapse and they won't drowned but still it's better to not run around on top of it yeah so that's what's going on out here from walking around looking at the plants enjoying the breeze and kind of hiding from it at the same time there have been a few gusts that have come through where i'm just kind of like uh is a tree gonna fall on me i'll probably give it a day and let this storm front move through because there's another big band that's going to move through here in a couple of hours and we can start doing some of these things and get the palm trees pulled that need to be pulled and I'll let the company take care of the rest of them. You ready to go inside, Turbo? Turbo, come on. Come on, baby. Hey, Punkin. You hanging out? Watching baseball, Punkin? Been enjoying October. So much baseball. Not that she likes baseball, but she seems to enjoy hanging out in the vicinity. Sometimes she'll go and play inside of her yacht and just, you know, have a good time while the game's on. I know, abrupt change. I just got off the phone with the uh, palm tree place they called and said hey we're gonna come out tomorrow so I went outside and I did a few things you can go have a look nothing terribly unusual or exciting you got all ever use the faux flame candles I like them I think they're neat there's still something about them though I've had these set up here for a long time and still like almost every night I walk past I'm like oh I need to blow the candles out and I remember within a millisecond that that's ridiculous don't need to blow them out because they're not real the rain eventually subsided and I came out here and I pulled up Turbo Town. The only reason I bring that up now instead of waiting until tomorrow to talk about it is because I don't know if it's going to be nice enough outside to bring the camera out and show the palm trees and the whole process of what's going on and do all of that. And I thought it would be nice to have a glimpse of what this space looks like, even if it's dark out, without that gate in here. There's still stuff I need to put away, but the gate's mostly put away. I left a little section out here just so Colby has a little play area. There's only a couple more days until it's gonna get cool enough that Colby's gotta move back into the house. Wanna make sure he has as much time outside as possible because that's where they thrive. Yes, I know, the hose is still in the way. I have it run over here to do some watering, which you wouldn't think I would need to do 
it's too dark, dark to even point out, but I do still have an area over here where it seems to be sheltered enough that the rain didn't do very much for it to keep it hydrated. Ah, that looks so much better not having the gates up. A little bit nervous about the puppy with all the plants. That was another reason I left part of it set up over here. I needed to have all of this cleared out because they're going to need to get in here to get to this queen palm and then to the adenidia palm. I mentioned last week when I was going to dig up the impatience and plant a bunch of things in that area that I wanted to just wait another week, like when it cooled off some, to start putting the perennials. Anyways, I have a bunch of perennials here that I don't want the dog to eat. So I've just kind of attempted to keep the spot shut off from the dog. Ugh, coming out here at night. It is so beautiful. It's like 75, 77 right now. And just glorious. The air is fresh from all the rain. A little sticky. That's okay. The sky. The clouds. I was going to say the clouds are beautiful. They're just kind of there. I'll take it. I still think it looks nice. I do have one thing that I'm going to be thinking on tonight. And it's that I may ask them when they're here tomorrow if they can take one more plant. And that's this big bird of paradise here. I've always overwintered it in the garage and had no problems with doing that. It's always grown and done wonderfully. The problem with it is just, well, it's huge. I've had this one for a while and you can see, I mean, it goes all the way from over here to all the way over there. And then when I take them inside, I generally trim off most of the foliage and give them a big wash to make sure there aren't any bugs on them. And they slowly start to rebound throughout the winter time and look neat, but just takes up so much space. And I have another one that's a little bit smaller. I had been debating whether or not to actually put these in the house this winter instead of in the garage because of all the space they take up. And I don't know, I feel like if I ask them like, hey, you think you could take one more? And they say yes, that it might be worth it to just like let them take it. And that would free up some space in the grow room this winter. I'll miss the plant, but like I said, I have another one around the corner that I can bring over here. It needs a repot, so it's nowhere near as big and nice as this one is. It's like kind of like on the struggle bus, if you know what I mean. That will allow me the space to go ahead and get the other one, pot it up into a bigger pot and maybe not do a cut back on it and then allow it to have that growing time in the winter in the grow space and not be as crowded by having two of them right next to each other. Just thinking out loud here, that's all that's happening. I don't know if that's gonna go tomorrow or not. I just got hit by something wet. Hopefully it was a raindrop. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was a raindrop. Doesn't that look so much better? This is something I started to alluding to back in March about getting the old tables out of here, getting the tiki bar moved, getting a new table, but I never came out and just said what I was doing because the availability of things and prices and whatnot and you know what I was going through physically recovering from things. I just wasn't positive I would be able to pull it off. So I didn't want to say exactly what the plan is, but here's, this is what I wanted. I think the table could come a little bit over this way, but for right now, this is fine. And hopefully it'll be dry enough tomorrow to come out and show everything. If not, then next time we're out here, the well, the palm trees will be gone. But I, honestly, like it doesn't make that much of a difference. You would think that it would, but there's enough color out here and I keep enough of the palms inside during the winter time that even when they take like the big queen palm was well the alexander palm that's over there and this queen palm i still think things look great out here even once those are gone hopefully they'll be able to take the washingtonia oh we will see so nice not having those barriers there it had gotten to a point where turbo he had learned that he could run up against this and just push it over i mean he's not full grown but he's like 50 something pounds that had play area for him it wasn't practical anymore tortoise loved it but for turbo really not serving much of a purpose at all. And don't worry, I know this seems like a big downgrade for Colby, don't worry. Colby gets lots of time to roam the entire yard and the entire house. Colby's good. Very, very good. Hey, Punkin, did you miss me? You kiss the camera? You can kisses? Oh, you so sweet, Punkin. Another off-topic thing, but did you see? Look at these. Aren't these absolutely beautiful? Got those from Walgreens. They look really pretty at night when all the lights are off. So oh, beautiful. You like my version of fall decorating? One glass pumpkin, two holographic pumpkins that also have colorful lights inside of them, some dried up hydrangea flowers, and the can I mean the candles are just here. That's just I just like them. Not even a fall thing, just keeping them around. Oh, and a souffle dish. Th that's it. I decorated. Oh, that's not true. I forgot. Y'all got me inspired to go to Home Goods a couple weeks ago, and people kept commenting about going to Home Goods, so I did. I hadn't been since COVID started and it was just, it was calling to me and I got a snow globe and I got a couple of what I think are sugar containers. 
that are absolutely beautiful. And then this hand towel that my sister gave me. She got a two-pack. Look, it's, they got cats that look kind of like pumpkin inside the pumpkins. Adorable. When I was checking out, the cashier pointed out to me that this one didn't have a lid on it. And uh, I was like, oh, I don't, it doesn't matter because I'm probably going to put succulents in it. I got this pretty blue one too. Isn't that nice? And then we have the pumpkins that we grew in the garden. And then this right here. So there we go. That's lots of fall stuff. And a dog toy. That counts as fall decorations, right? I think so. All right, we'll pick up tomorrow. Hopefully. Hopefully it'll be nice enough to get outside and see what's going on out there. Yeah. There's a lot of rain out there. It's not a hard rain, but it's consistent enough that I'm definitely not going to go out with my camera. At least not right now. I was thinking, and I don't know how well, well, that's not going to help. I don't know how you'll be able to see it, but the Alexandra pump has a couple big inflorescences on it. Some big bloom spikes, and uh, I just, it feels like such a waste to send those back to the greenhouse. I may as well cut those off and like stick them in a vase and get to enjoy them. I don't know if you can even see them. They're just long, scraggly, fun looking things sticking out of the trunks of the palms. So I was thinking, uh, I should probably grab the, you know, the tree pruner things and see if I can get those down. And then uh, I need to pull the drip up out of this container as well as out of, well, out of everything. Everything needs a drip pulled out of it, which isn't really that big of a deal. And I need to do something with all those sudden patients in front of that queen palm. I need to unwrap the other queen palm that's back there that has the cable wrapped around it. Oh, and the basket grass. I want to get the basket grass out from the Ed and Nitty. It's I, the only reason I'm even bothering talking about this right now is because I don't know if this rain's going to let up, which you would think would mean that they're not going to come, but I think they're probably still going to show up because they're not coming until this afternoon. They're like 9 a.m. right now, and I think it's going to keep doing this for a few hours, then it may stop. So basically, I think there may just be like a mad rush and panic for me to get everything done as quickly as possible, and I won't have the camera. Is it even raining that hard? Yes, it's raining too hard to take the camera out. Okay, so worst case scenario, what I'll end up doing is seeing if the rain's going to let up or at least get a little bit lighter and then maybe switch over to using my phone because that's at least waterproof. It'll be the best quality, but I mean, it's a vlog. It doesn't really matter. I shouldn't say it doesn't matter. It matters some, you know, I don't want things to be too sloppy here, but you know what I mean. I don't want to forget to get the basket grass, oh, and the caladium bulbs out of that Adenidia pot. Everything that's underneath the queen palm, I'm pretty sure that that's like, those are just annuals. The bromeliads have had it at this point. And I'd say the same thing for the Persian children of the goat. Yeah, that's, that's fine. They can take those things. We'll just have to wait and see what happens. All right, you can sniff, but you cannot. What do you have? Right when I was about to say you can't eat, you put like a little piece of paper. Always something with this puppy. Uh, the rain, it's not going to let up. So part of the audio and the change in quality, just going with it, going to make it work. It's like a fine mist right now, but it's more than I would ever allow the nice camera to experience. Also, been raining off and on for three days. Why is the water level low in the pool? That's concerning. I'm gonna figure that out here in a minute. You ever do something like you go, oh, I've solved a problem but you know you didn't do it quite right or you knew you were gonna regret having to undo what you did. I mean, that's what's happening right now. This is, there's just, there's not much room here. Don't really know how I'm gonna get back there. I do, I have to get in the pot and like put one foot in here and then like crawl over the top. It's going to be fun, especially since things are nice and slippery. I will be holding on to that and keeping it in the grow space. It feels like I could just like step right through. I can't, I feel like I can, but I know that I can't. I just maybe get up top here. Maybe try and climb through the palm tree without it falling over. Okay, one, two, three, and nope, can't do it. I'm scared. You know what? I can walk around. Let's just do that. Walking around works fine. A little bit wet and sticky. Oh, a dahlia. Wow, that's beautiful. Love a nice dahlia. The steak on that broke. I'm gonna come out here and cut those down sometime in the next couple of weeks. Yes, don't judge my lawn care. I don't care, it doesn't matter. Mostly strawberries, the rabbits enjoy them. It's a lot of strawberries. I'm up on top of the hill, this is like the nat native garden where I keep all the things for the pollinators and I don't use any type of, well, anything. I just put the plants on drip, keep the soil mended, let them grow and uh, let nature do what it needs to do over here. Very wet and sticky over here. Oh, the windmill palm's done a good amount of growing. Look how skinny and scrawny that is. It's because it, this is a spot that doesn't get a ton of sun. This isn't important right now. Oh, hey Ty, this is a fun new angle that we're getting here with everything. 
this leaf opened up a couple of weeks ago and haven't had a good look at it. Very nice and speckly. I'm going to try my best to squeeze through here without messing anything up. There we go. That wasn't so bad. <laughs> Could have been a lot worse. Got to have a look at some plants in areas that we don't normally get to look at. All right, last one. There we go. Chains are off. Glad to have that done. That's a, that's a dog toy. It doesn't need to be up here. Hey, Turbo. Turbo, I see you over there. I don't know why you got your face in the dirt. Yes, I do, because you're a dog and you're nasty. Ready? Want a toy? It's kind of gross. That's your favorite kind of toy. Too wet for you? Oh, no. He's still... Okay, he's still into it. We've got the wire off of here. Just need to pull up some drip lines. And that spot is done. I'll let them worry about what they want to pull from the pots and what they don't. I have a pretty bromeliad here. Lots of spider webs on it. There we go. I'll take you and put you right there. Oh, I just heard that sound that trucks make when they put their brakes on. That sound. It's coming from down there. I hope that that's not them. I wouldn't be totally shocked if they didn't even show up because of all this rain. They had me scheduled for later in the day. Can I get this out of here without breaking it? Probably shouldn't be a big deal. There we go. Okay, I got the basket grass and a geranium. Great. I will deal with that later. It's fine. Everything's fine. Okay. Go ahead. Get that stromanthe out of the way. And then get this other geranium out of the way that, ooh, you need some attention. Seashell, don't want that to get broken. Pretty piece of rock, don't want that to get broken. So lava rock that I'm just going to, we'll just scoot this out of the way. You are not helping. Okay, moving on to the bird of paradise. This thing's gotten so big. Look at that thing. Great big beastly plant. Don't think I'm going to pull anything from in this container. Those colocasias will die back. Those cordolins are in here. I could pull those. I don't know. Those have got to be rooted in there really well by now. So I think that they should be just fine throughout the winter time. And like I said, these Maui golds, I don't think I need to pull them either. So it should just die back on their own and come back next year. I mean, they didn't even do much. Those are what's left in this container from last year, right? Yes. Yeah, last year I had those planted in these two big blue containers. I put the bamboo in, I planted them up with the cordolins, I think some begonias, and the Maui gold colocasias. And that's what survived the winter. Okay, I hear a truck. I need to get back on top of things. Ugh, I think they're here. All right. I'm sorry, impatience. I'm gonna miss ya, but you gotta go. Oh, I forgot I have lights over here. I'm gonna finish that. Get the Alexander palm off the drip. Yeah, never mind. It's just a UPS truck. Okay, fun story. I guess debatable how fun it is. Should I switch to the other camera? I think I'm gonna do that. Okay, that's much better. Look at that. Nice wide angle. Not all zoomed in on everything. So I just got off the phone with the owner of the place that takes these palm trees and uh, told him what was going on with it. And he said, not a problem, deal with it all the time that they have an injection that they do into the trunk of the palm and that it's not a big deal and just send it on over. So that's, that's great news. I know it looks pretty bad right now because the angle of the light and everything and with the pygmy date palms going off into a whole nother thing right here, but with the pygmy date palms, I don't prune any of the bad foliage until it's like at least 70% browned off. And the reason for that is that there's a flow of nutrients that goes back up into the new growth. So it's a good idea to let that hold on for a while. So that's why when the old growth starts to age, I just leave it. It's fine. That's why there are some brown fronds there. So they are on their way. And now I, well, okay. I need to move all of these things. Not a big deal. I can do that. That really is fantastic news because, you know, the original plan was to just let the cold kill it back. Hope that kills off any of the eggs and then revive it. And that's never really the way you want to do things. But I was just like, this is... Pretty much all I got here. This is what I'm thinking I'm gonna have to do. So, fantastic news. Get to hold on to the pygmy date palm. Though I'm sure whatever they're injecting into there is probably gonna cost an arm and a leg, but hey, that's okay. Get that drip line out. Get this drip line out. That's good to go. I think they should be able to pull that through there. More than like, hey, hey. See, oh, he's learning. He's a quick learner. Oh, oh, there's a lot of water in there and the drip's running right now. Ooh. 
Apparently the water sensor on that timer is not working. No shocker there, those timers are such garbage. All right, I'm gonna pull the electrical and the rest of the drip from here and maybe give this a tilt so it can get some draining done. And well, that's it for the plum trees. Well, see them in the springtime. Well, everything's gone. They took the bird of paradise and the pygmy date palm and the queen palms and the Alexander, everything is off to its winter home. It started raining like as soon as I hit record, so I bolted under the umbrella to stay dry. I oh, have a big bare spot over here from where that queen palm was. Not a big deal. It's not like I don't have plants to put in its place. I'll probably move the windmill palm over there or maybe one of the mule palms, which is also what I would do over here. Normally, most years, they take the palm trees and then I quick fill the gaps back in, but it just doesn't want to stop raining, which is great. We need the rain. We didn't get much of it in September, so this is certainly making up for it, but it does. I, I have to end the vlog at this point because I need to edit it and actually be able to get it out. Not the end of the world, we'll do a little to be continued. Pick up next week, fill in some holes, and probably get some plants in the ground, assuming that the rain lets up. It should. I didn't see much rain in the forecast for next week, although last week it didn't call for all the rain in the forecast that's been going on right now. I don't know. To be continued. Hope y'all are doing well, having a great day, great life, and everything's just going beautifully for you. And comment down below and say hi. And this is normally when I would walk around and get different shots for everything I'm saying, but I can't because I'm trapped under the umbrella. Oh, that's pretty. Right. As always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. This is what I would normally zoom into something, but I can't, so just bye-bye.